government actions. So I just bring that to people's attention. I call Mario Lubick. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. It's uh, with great pleasure that I take a call on this um, Employment Relations Amendment Bill. Uh, now, the previous speaker mentioned the word humiliation. Um, what I think is utter humiliation is the fact that uh, the, the, the National Party so clearly shows in their speeches and, in fact, with all of the SOPs on the table, that they have no idea about modern union movements and modern workplaces working together. It's an absolute embarrassment. And I'll tell you about that exactly. I remember that uh, Dan Bedouin made a comment in his speech, and it was repeated by the member of the Coromandel, about unions, um, not, um, unions being the winners, and there is nothing in this for working people. What a bizarre statement, as if they have no idea that unions are the voices of the working people. They are all one. You can't disconnect them. So most of these changes in this bill are simply rolling back the undermining changes made by consecutive national governments over the last 10 years. And what these changes have done, they have actually hurt New Zealand people. They've hurt their families. They've created the working poor. The national government turned their backs to workers. They locked New Zealand and their workers and their families into a low-wage economy. Now, lifting wages is a very important part to growing productivity, and unions are a crucial part to this growth. Now, in New Zealand, as well as internationally, the decline of unions and collective bargaining has been strongly linked to the growth in inequality. And that is what we have seen over the years. Now, I'd like to have a look at some of these, um, these SOPs. They are actually really quite pathetic. Uh, there's one here, um, I don't know, must have a number, I've never talked about one. Uh, Honourable Scott Simpson in committee to move the issue about pay time for delegates. Um, oh, number 111. Now, a very clear example of the utter ignorance about what the role is of a delegate and, and what the role is of a delegate in a, in a modern union working with businesses. Have a look, for example, at um, the delegates at Air New Zealand. They play, and are playing at the moment, an absolutely crucial role in coming to a good concluded bargaining that ensures that both sides of the party win out of this bargaining round. Um, what delegates do every day, they make the work better for everyone. We hear it from union members, we hear it from union organisers, and whilst the opposition can laugh, it is very clear that they absolutely do not have that conversation with unions, they don't talk to businesses that um, encourage union membership, they don't talk to delegates, they don't talk to organisers, because what they would hear is that the delegates absolutely play a crucial role in ensuring that issues are addressed before they become bigger than taxes. And how would some of these employers deal with all of the issues in their workplace if they had to individually not only deal with the issues but also deal with negotiations? Um, so the SOP states that um, rather than the employer being responsible for compensation for activities that do not directly affect their business. So again, that shows very clearly that the delegates dealing with, with issues completely um, affect that business. The other one about um, union access. Now, we've heard a lot of scaremongering over the last few months about this unfettered access. Never mind that it has been explained very clearly and eloquently by organisers um, that you can compare the role of a, a union official to a contractor. They don't just wander in and do their business. No, they are usually very res re respectful because they've built up that, that, that uh, relationship with the businesses where they come in, they sign in. If there is a health and safety induction, they have gone through it. They report, they sign in, they do anything that a, a contractor does it well. And that has a very uh, important uh, place in a uh, workplace because working people should have the right to access the support and the advice from their representatives without it being restricted. So it is very um, ancient, I'm trying to find a word that is, that is appropriate, but it's, it's an absolutely um, out of date, <laughs> uh, undermining change um, that, that the national government's made. Backward thinking, there's a few good, a few good <laughs> words there, between the period of 2011 and 2015, because that's all it is. These changes only go back a, 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 such a short amount of time. 
Um, so, like I said, there are uh, lots of examples that we have from union officials being unreasonably blocked from access because bad employers, and let's face it, um, there's only a, a minimum of a few of them, but, but still these bad employers would uh, try to block um, people having access to fair representation. So, this bill is changing that, and um, I see I run out of time. I'll take another call. Thank you. I call the Honourable Paul Gold. Oh. Thank you, Madam Chair. 